Washington. All right, Nick, thank you very much. I want to get now a perspective on the Democratic presidential race. Charles Stiff, former U.S. ambassador to Tanzania, joins me now live in studio. Ambassador, always a pleasure for you to join us here to get your take on this issue. Great to be with you and the agenda audience. Great. Look, you know, some of the, the viewers back home are wondering, why should we care? American presidential elections happening in November. Why should I care living in Africa? Some say when America sneezes, the world catches the cold. Maybe it's a bad analogy to use at this stage, but yes. you get what I mean, yes. right? Yes. I mean, talk to us about Super Tuesday, right? We are talking about, what, 1,300 delegates at stake here. This represents about a third of the delegates up for grabs for, for the season. We have caucuses, primaries, but maybe to set it up or tee it up for our viewers. In terms of explaining the U.S. election uh, mechanism and how it works and how do we get to, you know, electing a president, the understanding is that it's not directly by the citizens in terms of the popular vote, but we're talking about the, the, the college, uh, electoral college. Break it down for us. Well, uh, a good way to start is a comparison with the system you have in South Africa. Right. Here, here you have a parliamentary system. And when you have national elections, you vote for the party. Yeah. Uh, even though there are faces that appear on the ballot, mm -hmm. you vote for the party. And then it's the party that makes the decision, ultimately, about who the president will be. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., uh, it's much more of a direct uh, way uh, to go about selecting the president. Right. Uh, both parties go through a primary process where the members of their party get to vote on who they want the standard bearer to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, there's the general election. And while the popular vote does matter, mm -hmm. it only matters to the extent that you win a certain number of states. Right. Uh, Hillary Clinton, for example, mm -hmm. in the last election, got three million more votes than Donald Trump. Correct. Yeah. But Donald Trump won 30 states. Hillary only won 20. Yeah. And so uh, he had a, a, a larger amount of electoral college uh, delegates. Right. Thus, he won the election and she did. This is why these primaries are so important. When we talk about Super Tuesday, we're talking about at least 14 states that are at, uh, at play here. And so far, Joe Biden, the comeback kid, as they call him, doing pretty well. Doing real well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Saturday was uh, his blowout victory in South Carolina. Everybody assumed that he would get some uh, uh, momentum out yep. of that. Uh, immediately after that uh, election, uh, Buttigieg yep. uh, dropped out. Yep. Steyer dropped out. Uh, Amy Klobuchar dropped out. Right. And they didn't just drop out. They all signed up to support the Biden candidacy. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then we had Super T Tuesday. And uh, to date, Biden has won nine states, including Texas. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a big one. It was a big one. Yeah. He also won Massachusetts, which is Warren. Elizabeth Warren's yeah. home state. Uh, and he didn't really campaign there. Mm -hmm. He also won Virginia. He really didn't campaign there. The other big state in his column from Super Tuesday was Alabama. Right. And the reason why is that Alabama has a Democratic senator, Doug Jones. Mm -hmm. And one of the key issues in this election is not simply winning back the White House, but whether or not uh, the Democrats can maintain their hold on the House mm -hmm. of Representatives and also win back the Senate. Well, you can't win back the Senate if you're giving up seats. And the fact that Joe Biden yeah. uh, had a resounding victory in Alabama would suggest that having him at the top of the ticket yeah. can be good for down ballot candidates. So we're talking about two main candidates here, being yes. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders on top right there. So we talk, spoke about Pete Buttigieg, uh, Amy Klobuchar, as well as Beto O'Rourke as well, throwing yes, their weight that's right. behind Joe Biden. But, Ambassador, do you worry that this might send a signal that the Democratic Party is now favoring Joe Biden and disadvantaging Bernie Sanders? Not really. I mean, at the end of the day, people are voting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, yeah. Th th that's the point. Yeah. People have an opportunity to come to the polls, and if they're buying what you're selling, mm -hmm. you get more votes. If they're not, 
you get less votes. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, I would go further to say that, um, you know, I, I think the electorate is, is, is coming to the conclusion that we need a candidate that can pull together a broad-based, diverse coalition yeah. in order to defeat Trump. Because okay. that's the number one priority well, yeah. on everybody on the Democratic side mm -hmm. of the ledger. Uh, and you've got uh, Republican women in the suburbs uh, right. who held their nose and voted for Trump the first time who are really looking somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've got a candidate like uh, Biden uh, who is, at, at the end of the day, no less progressive. I right. mean, the Democratic Party is the progressive yeah. party in the upcoming election. And he's trying to, I guess, coalesce the moderate uh, support around his candidacy. It seems to be working. Well, you know, I think to call it moderate support is a misnomer. Mm -hmm. I mean, the entire party is pro-environment. Uh, the entire sure. party is uh, the, the bent on criminal justice reform. The entire party is for gun control. The entire party is for upgrading yeah. our infrastructure. The entire party is, uh, you know, for but, taking on the, the it, uh, NRA and for universal health care. I get you, but some have labeled him as compared to a Bernie Sanders, who is a more a socialist Democrat, right. uh, as more centrist. Would you agree? Well, you know, I, again, the, the, the big issue at, at the end of the day is who can get something done. Mm. We live in a diverse country. Uh, there's diversity of opinion within the Democratic Party. Right. Uh, uh, so no less so when you look at uh, the, the Republican Party and other f what I would call fringe parties. I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. Mm. So in order to stitch the kind of coalition, the kind of electoral map that you need to carry the day, Right. At the end of the day, uh, as that great philosopher Janet Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> On election day, that's what yeah. people want to know. What right. can you get done? Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, Joe Biden has demonstrated, uh, you know, yeah. along with President Obama, they got Obamacare right. passed. Yeah. We've been talking about health uh, the, the care, yeah. the, the universal health care for 65 years in the United right. States. They got that done. And so the, the key is not to end it, but to mend it. Right. And most uh, what we're seeing, I think, in terms of uh, the overwhelming support that he's now starting to generate yeah. is that people think that's the way to go. You know, Joe Biden heard him a couple of days ago poking holes in terms of what you were saying. You know, what have you done yes. in terms of getting yes. things done yeah. in the uh, Bernie Sanders uh, case, in terms of what he has done in the Congress and what he has done in uh, the Senate? What do you make of his campaign so far? Because from what I've seen, he's, he has this potential, you know, of exciting young voters, and some are saying that he might bring out those voters that set out 2016. Well, two things. The, the first of which is Bernie Sanders clearly has a constituency. Right. I think what we're, I think <laughs> what we're seeing play out in this cycle yeah. is that there is a cap. Uh, you know, in the last election when it was him versus Hillary, he... Uh, beat Hillary uh, in New Hampshire. He got 60% of the vote. In this cycle, he only got 25% of the vote. 75% of the people in New Hampshire this cycle said they wanted somebody other than Bernie Sanders. Yeah. So while he has an enthusiastic following, there's a limit. And you've got to build beyond that limit in order to win right. an election. Um, I'm hopeful you know, as these results come in, I, I think the, 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 the Sanders campaign is, has been overwhelmed right. at Super Tuesday. I thought that I'm sure they thought they'd do a lot better mm -hmm. uh, than they've done. Uh, you know, it's got to set in. You, you know, mm -hmm. you, you pour a lot into these campaigns, yeah. emotionally, yeah. physically, financially. Right. And when the tide starts to turn against you. You know, you, you, you gulp and it right. takes you a minute to dry your eyes and kind of <laughs> see more clearly. Let's take, for instance, he goes to the top of the ticket and you have yes. a Trump-Sanders showdown. Polar opposites. You have Trump, whose approach is more nationalist. You have Bernie Sanders, who we were talking about, is a social democrat, as far left as you can get. Does this have a potential of ripping the country apart? 
Actually, un- uh, unfortunately, the answer to the question is, is probably no. Uh, you know, the, the George Santayana, the famous Harvard philosopher, said, I'm, I'm departing from Janet Jackson yeah. now. Uh, those, <laughs> moving up. Yeah. <laughs> moving up. Those who don't uh, uh, know the past are doomed to repeat it. 1972, mm. McGovern versus Nixon. Uh, McGovern was far to the left of the country, represented the far left in the Democratic Party. He ran against Nick, Richard Nixon. Nobody would argue that he was of, of higher character than mm, Nixon. Mm. He got cream. Mm. Out of 50 states, he carried two. Uh, we can't afford four more years yeah. of Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, I think if uh, you will wind up with Sanders versus Trump, yeah. I think that uh, unfortunately, I think uh, Trump would would uh, uh, probably mm-hmm. uh, wind up with a, a larger uh, electoral uh, college mm-hmm. majority uh, than he did against Hillary. Right. And I think the down ballot candidates would would be in trouble. You see, part of the thing, while this whole notion of the establishment, yeah. you know, rings romantic. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reality, he points to the Scandinavian countries. Mm-hmm. All of this great safe social safety net that he wants to create. In order to do that, uh, they, the, they, the, the tax rate is 55% mm-hmm. on people making $65,000 and above. That's middle class, right. upper middle class, and poor people. Yeah. America isn't going to bite for that. In mm-hmm. order to create that social safety net. There is a 25% national sale tax. Yeah. That's the most regressive form of taxation uh, 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 out there. Right. You know, people are not going to buy into that. But, you know, something that the Democrats, I guess, have something against them is that the economy is doing pretty well in the United States. And that, I think, Donald Trump should trump it more in terms of what he's doing for the country. When you look at past presidents, one-term presidents like George Bush Sr., he did a lot in terms of international, you know, but the economy was an issue and sure. people were voting sure. for the economy. Do you think some of the trends uh, would follow here? Well, you know, uh, look, we're in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic yeah. and we see stuff going on with the economy that's really hard to explain in economic terms. We see an economic effect, yeah. but it's hard to explain in economic terms. One of the takeaways, Donald Trump does not have as much to do with the state of the economy as it, he tries to make us believe mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Explain. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're, uh, obviously, if it were left up to him, uh, he wouldn't have had the stock market drop, you know, the 3% of value, right? Uh, and even though the Fed has agreed to cut the uh, the interest yeah. rate, uh, we haven't seen a corresponding bump up in uh, in the stock market. Mm-hmm. So you know the credit that he uh, attempts to take for the state of the economy, uh, like most things Trumpian, is greatly exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that will be a much harder sell. I think as we saw in the 2016 elections, when the Democrats took back the House, mm-hmm. people are concerned about health care. Right. People are concerned about gun violence. People were concerned about upgrading the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump is on is on the wrong side of all of those issues. When you add to that the yeah. serious concerns about character. Right. Uh, Democrats uh, have a real, real good shot to take back the White House. Well, let's look at some of the uh, Democrat candidates that have been put forward. And somebody that's out of the race now and supporting um, Joe Biden is Pete Buttigieg. Mayor Pete, as he is officially known. I mean, relatively unknown. A lot of us media people couldn't even pronounce his His surname. It was that difficult. Took took me a while, too. (laughs) As well. But, I mean, he's the first openly gay candidate Mm -hmm. vying for the presidency. Historic. Mm -hmm. Historic. But what are the other things? I mean, this has been a a, a crazy uh, season. And and I think the the last debate where it was like the gunfight at the OK Corral really kind of punctuated that point. 
Having said that, one of the great things, which is imp implicit in your point, mm -hmm. one of the great things about this primary season is that we've seen that there is an enormous amount of talent right. in the Democratic Party. I mean, imagine Joe Biden paired with Kamala Harris out of California as his running mate. Yeah. Oh, man, what kind of team would that be? And then somebody like a Cory Booker or Amy Klobuchar mm. as attorney general. Man, that'd be a huge upgrade mm -hmm. from Bill Barr. Do you uh, see anyone picking uh, Buttigieg as uh, the running mate? Uh, whether he'll, he'll be the running mate or not uh, is debatable. Yeah. I think in Biden's case... Uh, thing, the thing that would make somebody like a Kamala Harris a natural choice is that it is inarguable that the black community resuscitated this mm -hmm. campaign mm -hmm. in South Carolina. And Biden said, look, I'm not going to take you for granted. Right. And there's no more dramatic statement that he could make about not taking the community right. for granted than somebody like uh, Kamala Harris. As right. his running mate. And he seems, Biden, uh, talking about Biden over this past Super Tuesday, seems to have gotten the vote of confidence uh, from the African American community, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, in the, the Southern primaries, uh, in the Democratic Party, the, uh, the African American community represents anywhere from 30% yeah. to 60% of uh, registered members of the party. Right. And so, uh, no. You need that. Uh, you you need, need that it. base. Yeah. You need it. I want to talk about one of the most famous and I guess somebody that has a lot of currency in the Democratic Republic, which is Barack Obama. Yes. Barack Obama has not, you know, tipped anyone yet in terms of who he's supporting. You would assume that Joe Biden being his vice president, uh, he would go all in for Joe. Why hasn't he done it yet? Well, I think I think there's a, a, a couple of good reasons. One, uh, if you're running for president, you, you need to be able to get there on your yeah. own legs. Mm, mm. Uh, you, you know, you want to use the, the 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 benefits that come with having been his vice president for eight years. But at the end of the day, this isn't a referendum on Obama. Yeah, it's a referendum on Biden. So you need to want to run yeah. the race on your own. Secondly, right. uh, given that there's a strong likelihood that no one will have 1,991 delegates on the first ballot, yeah. uh, you're then going to have to engage what we call the superdelegates, elected officials, uh, then or in a position where they start to cast their votes. Obviously, uh, that adds an element of potential controversy. Right. Uh, and so if somebody like an Obama has kept his powder dry to mm -hmm. this point, mm -hmm. he's in a better position uh, to play the role of, of healer. Well, that's the thing. I was listening yes. to David, uh, David Axelrod the other yes. day, a former uh, advisor, senior advisor to President Obama, and he says he, Obama maybe sees himself as that after yes. all this yes. goes down, seems to, you know, play the role as pulling the party together. Yes. You yes. agree? Yeah. Yes. You, you're definitely going to need that. But, yeah. you know, the good thing is with what happened on Super Tuesday, we had this expression that the opera is not over until the fat lady sings. Yep. Well, if you listen, she's warming up on the <laughs> sidelines. Yeah. Uh, we've got a primary uh, on the, we have several primaries on the 10th. Matter of fact, Democrats abroad, their, their, their ability to vote mm. wraps up then. Uh, Michigan, which is a big state, yeah. Idaho, Washington state. Then you've got the debate on March 15th where uh, it will probably only be Sanders and Biden on yeah. the stage. Right. Immediately after that, March 17th, you've got Arizona, Florida, okay. Illinois, and Ohio, all big states. Right. 577, uh, yeah, 577 electoral votes just there. Yeah. So uh, this thing might get wrapped up a little quicker than we thought as when the season began. We've got to go, uh, Ambassador Buds, just before I leave you. I mean, do you expect it, though, to be, become a slugfest till the end? I really don't. Yeah. And uh, uh, again, uh, I, I, I visioned about a potential dream ticket. This is an unconventional season right. by, by any estimation. If I were advising Joe Biden, 
uh, after March 10th uh, set of primaries, if he does as well, I tell him, pick Kamala Harris as your vice presidential candidate right now. Mm -hmm. Declare, mm -hmm. get on the road together, wrap this thing up so that you're ready to do battle with Trump in November. It's a long road to November 3rd, I would guess. Yes. And sir, we appreciate your time and we'll My need pleasure. your mind My to pleasure. navigate through this. My Thank pleasure. you very much. So right. is that an invitation to come that back? That is indefinitely. Right, you have an open invitation All to right. come on this show. We Thanks. need a perspective like Thank yours. You. Thank you very much indeed. That was uh, Charles Stiff, former U.S. ambassador to Tanzania. We're going to take